When you're responsible for an entire country, it goes without saying that your life is pretty important. But not everyone will like the decisions you make, which can put you in a tricky position. Every day, you're at risk and require protection. From a personal army for one president to movable barricades for another, here are 15 of the most protected presidents in the world. Number 15. Kim Jong-un Most people know who Kim Jong-un is. He is the supreme leader of North Korea and a North Korean politician. As most people are aware, North Korean officials run a pretty tight ship, and not everyone's going to be happy with that. So Kim Jong-un has some pretty heavy security around him at all times to keep him safe. He has a 100,000-man army with a command structure, and they are known as Guard Command. He's also not often seen without a personal protection unit literally running beside his armored car at high-profile events. His entire army is dispersed countrywide in various brigades, regiments, and battalions. They conduct surveillance, look after his family and properties, and even provide medical care. Kim Jong-un also has a unit called the Rapid Response Force, which consists of around 2,000 soldiers with heavy weaponry who exist around the Pyongyang area to counter any coup attempts. Then there's the Communications Unit that focuses on nuclear weapon release commands. It definitely seems like Kim Jong-un has got things well covered, so it's nearly impossible for any citizen to even get near him, let alone do him any harm. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Queen Elizabeth II Okay, so she's not a president, but she's still one of the world's most protected people. Queen Elizabeth II has been ruling for longer than any other monarch in British history. She is loved, respected, and well protected. And by well-protected, we really do mean well-protected. Queen Elizabeth II has the Royal Protection Squad on her side, consisting of Scotland Yard members who provide 24-hour protection and security for the royal family. The squad was formed in 1983 and included around 185 SAS-trained officers, personal bodyguards, and uniformed officers. They watch over many members of the royal family, not just the queen. And they certainly work for their money, because there have been many threats of assassination and harm over the years. Queen Victoria had five attempts made on her life. Fortunately, Queen Elizabeth and other royals have not had so many. Prince Charles had to use his waterproof alarm watch when threatened with a harpoon gun while swimming in the Mediterranean. Before that incident, in 1994, a 23-year-old student, David Kang, started firing shots at Charles. Fortunately for Charles, the man was using a starter pistol, which only fired blanks. The protection of Queen Elizabeth II and the royal family comes at the cost of 27 million pounds a year, which can be a bitter pill to swallow for some Brits. Number 13. President Donald Trump When you're the president of a country with let's just say, a lot going on, your protection is gonna be necessary. <laughs> president Donald Trump's security costs are on track to surpass those of the Obama family by hundreds of millions of dollars. And that was back in 2017, so we're sure those figures have skyrocketed since then. When he made three trips to Mar-a-Lago, that came in at a cost of $10 million and even included having U.S. Coast Guard patrol boats on the shoreline ready to act. 
Police officials also estimated that to guard the Trump Tower where First Lady Melania Trump and Baron Trump lived, it would cost around half a million dollars a day, or $183 million a year. When President Trump made a trip to the Super Bowl in Mar-a-Lago, the Secret Service shelled out 12,000 bucks just for portable toilets, tents, golf carts, and light towers. Then there's the cost of hotel room bills when Eric Trump went to Uruguay. Those came in at about $100,000. Armed guards follow President Trump everywhere he goes, including when he travels in his limousine or by Air Force One. Even his food is monitored, as security agents have to know what goes into it to stop him from being poisoned. When they travel, his security personnel carry his blood type in case he needs a transfusion and sniffer dogs to sniff out bombs. Number 12. Vladimir Putin Russian President Vladimir Putin is rarely alone. Even when he goes to the toilet, there's always someone checking that he's safe and no threats are in the general vicinity. President Putin is looked after by the Presidential Security Service. This federal government agency protects both the president and the prime minister and their families. Within this agency, there's also a psychological security department which analyzes information collected about security threats. No stone is left unturned in making sure that every possible threat to President Putin is swiftly taken care of. But that might not have been enough for Vladimir Putin. In 2016, CNBC published a story that said he could be forging a personal army for dealing with domestic tensions. Executive orders were proposed to create a National Guard that Putin's former bodyguard Viktor Solotov would lead. The National Guard would serve in counterterrorism, national and public security, and state border protection. Some people were quite suspicious of the new army and believed it would be used to control the Russian population. The guard would answer to the government rather than a minister. Number 11. Xi Jinping The president of China, Xi Jinping, is easily one of the world's most protected presidents. Along with Communist Party officials, he is protected by the Central Security Bureau, which is an elite guard and secretive organization. Because Xi Jinping mostly keeps a low profile, most people were not aware of just how much security he needed. We were given an insight into it back in 2017, though, when he visited Hong Kong. The entire area was encompassed in a massive security blanket. Parts of the city were shut down, and 11,000 police officers were brought in for protection. They made use of helicopters and six-foot movable barricades to offer as much protection as possible. For his day-to-day -day care, the Central Security Bureau offers Xi Jinping much-needed peace of mind. They are responsible for all senior Chinese government's protection and protection of military leaders and the Communist Party. They also have full control over the People's Liberation Army's Central Guard unit. There are more than 8,000 people in the Bureau, with seven groups and 36 squadrons. They all have their own missions, including protecting the Premier of State Council and the Communist Party's General Secretary. Number 10. Mohammed bin Salman The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, may not be the most heavily protected man in the world, but that's not to say it won't yet happen. If recent history has shown us anything, security situations can change at the drop of a hat. The Crown Prince hasn't been on the best terms with his father, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Rumors were circulating last year that the family fallout could lead to Mohammed being kicked out of office. But Mohammed is not having any of that. He has started forming a colossal security network around himself to make sure that doesn't happen. He spent over a year influencing the military and security agencies in Saudi Arabia. He did this by promoting young officers who showed their loyalty to him. He even managed to arrange it so that higher-ups reported to him, not someone else. The Saudi Royal Guard, Land Forces, Air Force, Navy, Armed Forces, and Air Defense all report to him. What's more, Mohammed had around 800 new officer positions planned by the end of 2019. Number 9. Recep Tayyip Erdogan 
Recep Tayyip Erdogan is the president of Turkey, and it's okay if you're confused about why we think he's one of the most protected presidents in the world. It's true that he only has a security detail of 60 people, but those 60 people are definitely some you don't want to mess with. He probably feels entirely safe when in their presence. The 60-man bodyguard detail is called the Mustacheers. It's a cute play on words, but there's nothing cute about these men. Aside from their pretty awesome mustaches, they are all quite muscly, burly men who provide the president with an incredibly high level of protection and service. For example, when he visited Washington, D.C., people were on site protesting. The mustacheers, without a second thought, kicked the living daylights out of many of those protesters and caused a nightmare for police. <laughs> Some of them were charged, but those charges were later dropped. The dropping of the charges happened to coincide with the president's meeting with the Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. When he visited again in 2019, police, the Secret Service, and the U.S. State Department were all bracing themselves for his return. They didn't want a repeat performance from his fierce unit of bodyguards. Number 8. Shinzo Abe Shinzo Abe was the longest serving prime minister in Japanese history. He served as the president of the Liberal Democratic Party and the Prime Minister of Japan from 2006 to 2007, then from 2012 to 2020. He was even briefly the leader of the opposition in 2012. When you've been in office for that long, it pays to have a lot of protection. There are gonna be people who don't like how you do things or think you've been in power for long enough. So, Shinzo Abe had a pretty dedicated security unit. In the past, it wasn't uncommon for Shinzo Abe to have a security team of around 9,000 people to handle his travel security needs. Even when he visited a shrine, he had to have bodyguards with him at all times. As far as bodyguards go, they're often quite scary and they have to be. They don't want to look weak or like they can't protect you, but it's possible to have both an expert team and one that's really polite. For example, when his motorcade was on a highway in 2016, they chose to travel with traffic rather than closing the road and having it all to themselves. Then, when they needed to change lanes, a security staff member leaned out the window and gestured politely to other cars to let them in. Number 7. Alpha Conde. The president of Guinea, Alpha Conde, is one of the most protected presidents in the world. He's also the first democratically elected president, which we are sure comes with its own set of challenges. And we're not wrong. He is one of the most heavily protected presidents for good reason. In 2011, his political opponents tried to assassinate him in his own home. Thanks to his extraordinary security force, they didn't manage to succeed. In saying that, it was hard work keeping it that way. A two-hour battle ensued, with fighting scenes you thought you'd only see in a movie. There were hostile gunmen, a grenade launcher, and dangerous weapons. Then, just after he announced the first attack, there was a second one. It's clear to see that Alpha Conde's security details doing a top-notch job. Still, they're also hostile against the media. In 2016, they beat up a reporter because he photographed the president when he was leaving an assembly. But can you really blame them when so many people want their president to die? They're made of tough stuff, and they have to be. Number 6. Benjamin Netanyahu the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, has always had a solid team of security officials. After all, he finds himself repeatedly in the firing line regarding U.S.-Israeli relations, which, by the way, are at crisis point more often than not. But in recent months, he's had to step up his security, which makes him one of the most protected Prime Ministers in the world. In July, Benjamin and his family both received extra protection because of protests and tensions between police, demonstrators, and Netanyahu supporters. 
Many demonstrators have been threatening to kill the Prime Minister, and there have even been demonstrations outside his family home. As a result, he has had to have both barriers and security guards positioned around his house to stop the thousands of demonstrators from inflicting damage and destruction. In saying that, supporters and protesters are probably in just as much need of protection. At one protest, anti-Netanyahu demonstrators were pepper sprayed, protesters were beaten, and one was even stabbed in the neck. Number 5. Ali Khamenei When you're one of the world's most powerful leaders, you are, of course, gonna be one of the most protected. Let's first focus on why Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran, needs that protection. He has openly opposed Western influence for years and has even championed the slogan, Death to America, for just as long. He also wanted to make Tehran an ideological and geopolitical enemy of Israel and the United States. In saying that, he has made changes in recent years. He agreed to a nuclear deal with six world powers to curb his nuclear program. In exchange, the US and its partners would lift economic sanctions. There isn't a lot of information on how he's protected, but we would say that his protection levels are pretty high, in part due to how often his life has been put in danger. For example, he narrowly avoided being assassinated in 1981 at the Abu Zar Mosque. A young man placed a tape recorder with papers on his desk and then pressed a button. The loudspeaker on it began sounding like a whistle, and then it exploded. On the inside wall of the tape recorder was written, a gift of Furkan Group to the Islamic Republic. His lungs and vocal cords were seriously injured, and he lost the use of his right arm. Number 4. Paul Bia all African presidents are heavily guarded, and Paul Bia, the Cameroon president, is no exception. In fact, he is definitely one of the most protected presidents in the world. He has been the president for almost four decades, and thanks to his top-notch security team, he hasn't been involved in any incidents since a coup d'etat in 1984. The Cameroonian coup attempt occurred when presidential palace guards tried to overthrow Paul Bia. It took several days of fighting to sort it out, and it's now one of the most critical events in Cameroon's history since its independence in 1960. Now, Paul travels in an armored Range Rover Sentinel and sometimes even armored limousines. The Range Rover has a price tag of around half a million dollars. He also has a pretty impressive motorcade, so you definitely know when Paul is out and about. Alongside the Range Rover, the motorcade also consists of 20 high-speed motorbikes, Land Cruisers, and Mercedes-Benz S-Classes. Every time he goes somewhere, he has over 20 bodyguards, which he has with him for both domestic and international travel. Number 3. Emmanuel Macron Emmanuel Macron is the president of France who has not only had to worry about his own security, but that of his country. When he became the president in 2017, it was considered one of the most eventful and brutal election campaigns in recent history. This was mostly because France's domestic security was a hot topic, especially due to repeated terror attacks. Since he was elected, he promised to strengthen internal security, increase spending on security, and provide centers for people returning from fighting for the Islamic State. He also faced the prospect of reform within the French intelligence service, but this was not thought to help the S-List, which was a system for monitoring security threats. The list has been in existence since 1969 and has over 400,000 names of anarchists, terror suspects, ecologists, and organized crime figures. When it comes to his own protection, he relies on the security group for the presidency of the republic. This security unit of 60 trained people keeps the president safe and forms part of the national police and national gendarmerie. Number 2. Narendra Modi 
Just like any other head of state, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has some pretty impressive security personnel keeping him safe. He gets 24-hour protection wherever he is and whatever he's doing. Whenever he's in a public setting, India's Prime Minister is surrounded by special protection group soldiers who can take out a shooter within a fraction of a second. They are trained within the guidelines of the Secret Service of America and are never without their assault rifles, automatic guns, and revolvers. But as it turns out, Narendra Modi isn't the only one who gets such treatment. The SPG also provides security services to past prime ministers in India as well as their family members. The level of protection often depends on the threat perception and their position. Police and local government are in charge of making these decisions and organizing the protection. Whenever Narendra Modi or any past or future prime minister goes into a public area, the entire area is inspected by the Delhi Police Security Branch. The SPG is there on the day, and whole roads of traffic are blocked off to allow for a clear route through to their destination. Number 1. Emerson Mnangagwa being the president of Zimbabwe takes a special kind of person. Every day, you can be in fear for your life, and you don't go anywhere without a security team keeping you safe. This has become even more important in recent years because of political unrest. Emerson Mnangagwa, the Zimbabwe president, is one of the most protected country leaders in the world. When he travels to any destination, he has a convoy of high-speed motorcycles and several presidential guides. He also travels in an armored limousine. Emerson came into power after a 2017 military takeover saw Robert Mugabe removed from office. He won a disputed election in 2018 and had plans to revive the country's economy through foreign investment. Instead, the economy has imploded. Their inflation is the second highest in the world at 700%, and COVID-19 has only but added to the problem of food insecurity in 60% of the population. President Mnangagwa said his security forces would not relent, and he still pledged to fix the collapsing economy and corruption. If unsuccessful, who knows how much extra protection he'll need to stay safe. I don't know about you, but I don't think I would be all that comfortable having the country's problems on my shoulders while also just trying to stay alive. If you were president, which country would you like to lead? And could you handle it? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!